I have another low carb ketogenic meal I wanna share with you today. Today, it will be chicken fritters. Very easy to put together, very, very tasty. There will be a bit of a challenge because I'm in the woods and it's minus 15 degrees and windy. So let's get it on and see if I can actually make this work. So there is a few steps to making this meal. So I, it'll take me a bit of time and I'll show you the ingredients. I'll talk about what I am gonna do. I do have to get a fire built in a stove that I brought out today, a new one that I'll be reviewing at the same time. So uh, what do I have? Okay, so the star of the show is a can of Costco chicken, chicken breast. This is chunk chicken breast from Costco. This is a 354 grams uh, can and I'm gonna be using the whole thing two eggs, one cup of grated cheddar cheese, can be any cheese that you want for this. I have about one cup of mixed vegetables that I'll be uh, sauteing up and inside I have some onions, some green red pepper and some garlic in there. And in here I have a quarter cup of, of flour. Now the flour in this case will be almond flour. I did decide to put a little bit of coconut flour in this. I'll explain as I go along. And I also put a tablespoon of psyllium husk in here and I'll explain that as I go along. I have two other containers. This is what I'll be putting on my chicken fritters once they're all said and done. And this is a sriracha mayo that I mixed up. So it's just a matter of taking some mayonnaise, pouring in some sriracha sauce, mixing it together until you get the the spicy that this you want uh, but the only thing I would caution you on to make sure you stay on the low carb size is if you're buying this off of the grocery store shelf take a look at the back of the bottles of mayonnaise and uh, the bottles of sriracha and make sure that it's sugar free or that you're happy or at least you'll tolerate the amount of carbs the other thing I'll say about mayonnaise right now I'm not going to spend any time on it is most mayonnaise are made with a seed oil which uh, we know on the ketogenic diet is not the healthiest thing it's not the healthiest thing for anybody but you can buy mayonnaise made with olive oil and that's what I did I bought some mayo olive oil uh, olive oil made with mayonnaise even better is to make your own then you have full control over it but that's what I'm putting on afterwards and I have one more thing here this is a little different none of this or this is not an essential part of the cooking process but I thought it went well together this is schmaltz and you're saying what is schmaltz. Schmaltz is rendered chicken fat. So my wife was doing some bulk cooking the other day and uh, had a whole lot of skin off chickens. Uh, and she said, would you like to have it? I said, yes, of course I want that. And you just render it down until it becomes liquid and the skins become crispy little, uh, tasty little morsels, in fact. And then you strain off and, and filter out anything else and you get let it firm up and that's what you get. You get schmaltz. Schmaltz is like tallow is for beef or lard is for pork but it's not it doesn't have quite the same shelf life and it doesn't harden up like tallow will but uh, in this case it makes great cooking fat though so that's what I'm going to be using all right so what's the process so I have my pathfinder pot here the bush pot and in that I'm going to be mixing all of my ingredients together and forming uh, basically some patties. They turn out to be kind of a wet patty, but that's okay. We'll, it, they'll fry up just fine. The uh, thing I have to do first, though, is I have to cook up the vegetables or saute up the vegetables and then let them cool off, and uh, and then I can mix all the other ingredients together. So I guess that's first step. First things first is we have to get a fire on. Now, this is a little bit more intense of a fire than you want to do this normally, but if you're careful, you can still manage it. Get my pan on, my carbon steel pan. Get some of the schmaltz in. Let that melt quickly. And then I can start sauteing the vegetables. And as long as I keep them moving, then they shouldn't burn. The schmaltz doesn't, uh, like I said, at home, if you left it on the counter, it would uh, stay soft. Even in the fridge, it's soft like butter, I guess. But uh, out here in minus, uh, well, probably down to minus, up to minus 10, not down, up to minus 10 now. It's, uh, it's pretty solid. All right, my fire is dying down just a little bit, which is nice. Let's get the vegetables in there. Ooh, the garlic. Gotta love it though. All 
All right, let's keep those things moving as quickly. Smoke in the eyes. It won't take very long for those to saute. And all I'm looking for really is to, for, especially the onions, that's your best test of, of uh, how it's going, is to see them go somewhat translucent. They don't burn them. Yeah, if they get a little bit of golden brown, that's fine. But uh, translucent is what I'm looking for here. This is working well. Man, that stove is, what a performer. It is ideal for doing this. All right, what I'll do is I'll just work on this for a minute. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm ready to take it off, and then we'll move on to the next step. Hi folks, apparently I failed to hit the record button on the next segment for this video. So basically all I did in that segment was to combine all of the ingredients inside of my uh, Pathfinder bush pot. So I started with draining all the water out of my can of Costco chicken, and then I added in the sauteed vegetables, I added in the two eggs, the, the cheddar cheese, and then the flour. I then mixed it all up until it was well combined and use my spoon to portion it out and make the patties that you'll see I do so in the next segment. Now there's only one other thing I want to add right now and that is in the recipe in the video description you will see that I call for using a quarter cup of almond flour. Alternatively three tablespoons of almond flour and one tablespoon of psyllium husk. In this recipe, this time, what I did was just a slight variation. I used two tablespoons of almond flour, one tablespoon of coconut flour, and one tablespoon of psyllium husk. The reason I changed up and added the coconut flour was, my experience is it does a much better job of absorbing any liquid. And in previous attempts at making these, I found that the patties were a little wetter than I would like to them. So that's why I changed up and used a little bit of coconut flour. Now the psyllium husk, what it does for the recipe is help to hold everything together. Psyllium husk acts as a binder, so it, along with the egg, Eggs help hold the patties together and I think it worked out very well as you'll see in the remainder of this video. So going back and forth between preparing the ingredients and then going to the fire I'm switching between leather insulated gloves and uh, my fingerless mitts or fingerless gloves that I can use to get a little bit more dexterity. Where's my smalts? I'm gonna add a little bit more smalts to the pan here. The fire has Ooh, looks nice underneath. They die down to some nice grilling coals. That way I don't get too much heat. Yeah, I do need a glove. Yes. Smoltz is also a good uh, oil fat to fry in. It has a fairly high smoke point. And uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I like it. So what I'm doing now is making patties with my bare hands. You could scoop it right in if it, uh, with the spoon and press it down. This is just another way of doing it. I will likely get five, six. Sometimes I get a little more if I make them smaller, but patties here, that's a bit too much. They're very wet patties, so I will have to wash my hands. Where's my... And all I can do now is just to keep an eye on them so that they don't burn and flip them when I need to. And uh, then repeat. I, I have my pan, pie plate here that I use for my eating utensil. 
I'll just give them a few minutes. I'll flip them over. You'll see that happening so that you know what they look like when it's time to flip them. I flipped one of my patties over just to as a test to see where it was. You can see the golden color. Look, look at, look at that. That's what you're looking for. Bring my other one around. Oh, man. How easy is this? This Pico grill is, is doing ideal for, for the type of cooking that I'm using here. The hardwood that I'm putting in, I think that was just a couple pieces of oak on top of the maple. They're burning slowly, but they're providing me a nice even heat. And that's the whole trick with cooking with fire is don't try and cook over a lot of flame. You want to cook over coals. In order to get to coals, you have to go through the stage of flame, use some bigger wood to because it'll burn more slowly. If you use hardwood, it'll last a little longer, which is, of course, what you're trying to do here. Yeah, it, it, there is an experience thing. You got to watch things. It's not the same as cooking at home in a fry pan. You have to watch things over a fire because the fire can flare up. Then you get, you've burnt your dinner or it can die down and your dinner isn't cooking as quickly as you think it is. So keep an eye on it. Not quite ready. Press them down a little bit. I'll probably flip them back maybe back and forth one or two times. See what they look like now. Now oh, that was a little too soon. Yep, takes another minute or two. Got to move my schmaltz down through because it's a little bit off centered here. All right, so I have more of this in my pot that I need to cook. So I'll finish these off, put them in my pan, do the rest of them. And I think we'll be ready for a taste test when that when I'm done. All right, so in full disclosure, I only cooked the three of the fritters. I looked, I had enough material for another two fritters, but uh, uh, in a head that's been an evening meal, I would have ate all five of them easily. But I just, this is a, a well, actually a late afternoon lunch right now. So this is plenty. I do have to go home and have supper tonight, so I can't <laughs> eat too much. But this, they came out, spot on perfect. So let me give you a close up of what they look like. Hopefully you can see that. The uh, That's the sriracha mail up there in the corner. Right, I think that's showing up on the picture. Let's do the taste test. So, so little story that goes with these right after I do a taste test. <laughs> Man! I'm just doing, got to take a taste without the sriracha. Mm. Okay, I've cooked some good meals out here in the woods as far as I'm concerned. I don't consider myself a cook at all. You've heard me say that. But I've, I've been fortunate enough to cook some really good meals. I always say it's about managing your fire and getting your skills down that way. And that's probably what I have is some fire skills, if not cooking skills. But this rates right at the top. And I know someone will say... That's because you cooked it in the woods. It always tastes better in the woods. You're right. There's no question of that. But when, even when I cook these at home, they're good. But this is better than whenever I've made them at home. Mm. Okay, for, for me, the trick to get this so spot on wasn't just the ingredients, was to put sufficient, a number, a, a sufficient amount of fat in the pan to crisp up the outside of them. So that smalt that I mentioned is great. Now you don't have to use smalt, you can use any, whatever oil or butter or ghee or coconut oil or olive oil or avocado oil or whatever else that is your favorite cooking oil. If you're cooking over a fire, it's good to have something with a high smoke point. That ghee is something I use quite often out here in the woods for that reason. Ghee being clarified butter. Uh, but the smalt, I think it added a flavor as well as a texture to this. Mmm. Crisped up the outside just nicely. So what's the story? This is my fourth attempt to make this out here in the woods. For whatever reason, well, a number of reasons, I got out, I brought the ingredients, and I, I built the fires. Uh, it started, I had, it was in the middle of a snowstorm one day, unexpectedly. Uh, not that that would have stopped me from cooking, but I couldn't film. I couldn't record in that 
for uh, fear of the camera getting wet. Uh, just different things. One day it was just too windy. Uh, in other days, I just ran out of time. I always took the, the, uh, the ingredients home and then cooked it up for supper at home. This is the first opportunity I have had to actually finish the process out here in the woods. Okay, that's enough. It's not fair to you, I know. So, how can I close this one off? The ingredients were simple. I did prep up my vegetables at home, the uh, peppers and, and onions and garlic, so that I didn't have to do that out here in the wood. I could have easily brought them out, but I just want, I wanted to bring out just the right amount. The chicken, could I have used something different than the canned chicken from Costco? Yeah, absolutely. I could have brought out fresh chicken breasts, chopped them as fine as I could get them, fried those up before making the patties out of them. Uh, that was just more work than I wanted to go through, to be honest. There is uh, something about being able to just open a can and drop that in. You have to take the can home, of course, but uh, other than that, it's, it was, makes it a life a lot easier. Having all the ingredients ready to go uh, makes life easier here cooking over a fire because there are so many other variables to cooking over a fire that you have to attend uh, to that you might, why not just make it easier on yourself. Uh, yeah, so one other thing I've, I've done at home is I've used exactly the same recipe and substituted the chicken and used things like salmon, a can of salmon, a can of crab, crab meat for one of them, I do have flakes of ham. I haven't gone around to trying that one yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't make any difference. Um, you know, this one's called a fritter. The same thing could be in any number of names for these little patties, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it just tastes good, easy to make. I guess that's what it's all about. Tastes good and easy to make. All right. That's all I have to say about this chicken fritter recipe. Low carb, uh, ketogenic friendly meal. If you have any questions, then please put them in the uh, comment section below. If you have any comments or any suggestions for future meals, please share those with me as well. Have you tried this? Will you try this? That'd be interesting to hear. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, the recipe and all the macros are, will be in the video description. Get out and explore. Take that path. Let's travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.